Contender regime boxing checking back in, man. Say, they talking about Earl don't got no back foot game, bro. You know what I'm saying? They talking about, you know, you see, I'm jumping straight in. You feel me? Head first. They talking about Earl don't got no back foot game, bro. You know what I'm saying? He ain't got no footwork. He ain't got no plan B. All he going to do is come forward and attack body punches and all this. I mean, bro. I don't. I just don't understand if you call yourself a boxing fan or a purist or whatever, somebody who's supposed to be knowledgeable about the sport. I don't understand how you can watch Earl for however many rounds you didn't see him, and the only thing that you see is him coming forward. No tactical aggression. No fundamentals. No uh, skill or mental capacity or mental fortitude you don't see none of this bro look at the phil lo greco fight earl fought off the back foot you know what i'm saying as as long as the fight lasted i think it was like three or four rounds look at the uh kale brook fight kale was trying his bet kale was the bigger fighter in that fight you know what i'm saying he did his best to push earl back and he did sometimes he pushed earl back at some at some points in that fight but Earl was still able to fight off the back foot. Let's take um, let's take that uh, Kell Brook fight um, as an example about them saying Earl don't have a plan B. Now, what a lot of people, a lot of fighters get flack for abandoning their game plan, right? We've seen that with we've seen that with Adrian Broner. With these countless fighters that we've seen that start off in the fight doing something that they needed to do in order to win things that we've all discussed before the fight like what well, this fighter got to do this he got established the jab keep it going uh you know keep moving uh uh you know uh jab jab hook get out the way you know what I'm saying we we kind of come up with a with a game plan in our head on how we feel like this fighter would have the best chance to win and of course that fighter and that trainer they come up with a game plan on what they need to do and what they need to keep up throughout the duration of the fight in order to get the W, right? But many times we've seen that fighters will abandon the game plan. I see that Earl is getting flack and getting criticized for sticking with his game plan. Had It was no reason for Earl to show no plan B against Kell Brook. Why? People say he was losing the first six rounds. That's a lie. The first six rounds was close. Now, granted, Kell Brook was doing very well. Why wouldn't he do very well, nigga? You in your hometown, number one, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. At the time that Earl Spence fought Kell Brook and before that, Kell Brook was the best fighter at welterweight, period. The best fighter at 147, I got Kell Brook at that time before he fought Triple G. I got Kell Brook beating, uh, beating goddamn Keith Thurman. I got He can stop Keith Thurman. I got him beating Keith Thurman. He already beat Sean Porter. I had him beating Danny Garcia. It was nobody at welterweight at that time fucking with Kell Brook but Earl Spence. So let's get that out the way. Niggas acting like... Earl was just supposed to go in there and hit uh hit Kell Brook with one punch and he just supposed to fold. He overseas in that man hometown fighting a champion and he supposed to just fold. Like, come on, bro. Kell Brook was the best fighter at 147. What you think, nigga? This shit was going to be easy? No, it wasn't going to be easy. Give Kell Brook his credit, man. Come on, dog. But look, so... Earl went over there, you know what I'm saying? First six rounds, it was it was a tussle. It was back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, damn, I predicted this shit was going to be tough. But I'm like, you know, Kale really like Kale on his game. Kale came in that bitch looking sharp. Kale Brook was on point in that fight the first six or seven rounds, bro. But Earl was winning a couple of rounds too. I would say in the first six rounds, you could either have it 4-2 for Kale or 3-3. Three, three. You know what I'm saying? Some people might even have it 4-2 for Earl. But to be honest, I had it. I was leaning either I was I was leaning either 3-3 or 4-2 for Kell Brook. But niggas talking about Earl ain't got no plan B. If he would have tried to switch in the middle of the fight and what he was doing was effective, bro, he was breaking Kell Brook down systematically. Staying with the jab, being relentless. Working his way on the inside, jab, 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 
body, body, head, body, you know what I'm saying, cutting that ring off. Uh, Kell Brook getting tired and more tired and more tired as the fight go on. And that's one of the hardest and most toughest things about Earl Spence is you can try. You can have the game plan to outbox Earl. But, my nigga, that shit is tough, bro. If he coming at you from all angles, nigga, round after round, every minute, every second of the round, ain't nowhere for you to go. You gonna get tired. And I promise you, you ain't got the stamina that Earl Spence got. And he gets stronger as the fight go. So why would Earl switch his game plan? I guess you wanted him to like box, stick, and move. Why? The game plan was to put relentless pressure on Kell Brook and break him down till he can't take no more. And that's exactly what he did. People give fighters flack all the time for abandoning the game plan. But here it is. You got Earl Spence, a guy who stick with the game plan and get his man up out of there. Come on, bro. The, I'm going to tell you who going who gonna to make Earl so something different. It's going to be Terrence Crawford. Now, I, I got, y'all, go check my video out why I think Earl Spence beats Terrence Crawford. I think Earl Spence going to win that fight. I got him winning by stoppage. But I definitely think Terrence Crawford is the caliber of fighter that's going to make Earl pull a few more tools out the box. And I know he got those tools. I've seen him box in Olympics. I've seen him in the amateurs. I, the, the guy can box. Uh, contrary to your belief and what people may say, Earl Spence is a very, very, very skilled and technical fighter. And one of the most underrated things about him is his mental game. He's a very, very, very intelligent fighter. His ring generalship and IQ is up there with the best in the sport right now. He don't get the credit for it because he's so powerful and so dominant with his just his physical and natural talent with power and, and combinations and leverage on his shots and that's why he don't he don't you know what i'm saying people that really don't know boxing like that that's all they see they don't really look past that and break down like how he's able to do this shit as opposed to what he's actually doing they don't look at how he's able to do this shit so again let's go back to the the, the back foot game Earl can fight on the back foot. Look at the Phil LoGreco fight. It was points in that fight where uh, Phil tried to blitz Earl. And Earl literally stepping back, taking one step back, body shot. Another step back, body shot. He fighting, literally throwing murderous body shots as he's moving backwards, bro. Like, he's moving back. Throwing mean ass body shots as Phil LoGreco trying to work his way on in there. And then out of, you know, at some point, one of them them shots, he went to the body and came back up to the head and dropped Phil. You know what I'm saying? Again, you look at the Kell Brook fight. Kell was trying to push Earl, and Earl was fighting going back. Jab, he can fight on the back foot, bro. I don't worry y'all getting this shit from. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand why people like really want to take credit away from Earl Spence, bro. I really don't understand this shit. You know, and another thing was crazy. This is another thing that's crazy to me. It's like you look at a guy like Floyd Mayweather, you know what I'm saying? One of the probably the most skilled and purest boxer of all time. I'm not talking about just overall fighter. He is one of the greatest overall fighters of all time. But what I'm talking about is when we say pure boxing ability when it comes down to the foundation of the sport, the skill, the sweet science, there's really nobody better than Floyd Mayweather, period, that I've ever seen. People hated Floyd for his style because he was winning so easily just by outboxing and outskilling his guy. You know what I'm saying? Outthinking him, outsmarting him, outstrategizing him. People hated Floyd Mayweather for that. But then you got a guy like Earl Spence who giving you everything you want. Beautiful performances. Breaking his opponent down. Body shots. Shit that we don't even see niggas throwing body shots like that. Like they do back, like they did back in the day. Earl brought that shit back. Body shots. You know what I'm saying? With I just seen an interview. Um, damn, I think it was the boxing pugilist. I forget whose channel. I was just watching it before I started this video. Um, after the, the recent press conference that they him and Mikey Garcia did in Dallas, where Earl, one of the quotes stood out to me, he said, look, if Mikey Garcia, you know, if they come in there thinking 
you know, they just going that, you know, all I have is my size. He said, I don't care about that. He said, because when we get in the ring, it's just me and him. He, they was asking him about, well, you know, with you being in Dallas and it's such a large Latino fan base, do are you worried about um, getting booed even if it's your hometown because there's so many Latinos, Mexicans, you know what I'm saying, that's going to be in the area rooting for Mikey? He said, "Do you are you worried about that? He said, you know, since it is my hometown, I'd hope that, you know, they'll be cheering me on, but I don't care, you know, because when we get in that ring, it's just me and him, and this is the line. He said, only thing on my mind is kill. Only thing on my mind is kill. Ain't that what y'all want? Ain't that what y'all want? Don't y'all want a nigga that's going to go in there and get his man up out of there? That's what y'all been asking for. And now that y'all got it, y'all mad. Y'all hating on the man. Y'all want to see him fall. Ain't this what y'all wanted? All the Mexicans that's talking about Floyd is a ducker. He's a runner. He's a chicken. But now you got Earl Spencer, a guy that's, that's doing everything that you want. But you still ain't good enough. Come on, man. Hey, contender regime boxing. I had to chime back in on that, man. Say Got another video coming up. I'm going to keep this Mikey Garcia, Earl Spence shit going. We're going to build this fight up. It's a great, uh, entertaining fight for as long as it's going to last. And we're going to build this fight on up, man. Holla at your boy.